Welcome to another episode of Petro Talk. Today we have Diego Rodriguez. Welcome back, Diego. Diego has been with SCI for just over 13 years. He's the CTO and he manages all the software, the programming, back end, front end, middle end, everything. That's great, Dory. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I'm excited to have the opportunity to discuss the impact of the fuel management system across industries. Diego, could you give our listeners a quick overview of what a fuel management system entails? No need to go super into detail, mm -hmm. but just an overview of everything. Yeah, so basically the field management systems are uh, made to monitor and manage uh, the consumption of the fuel, mm -hmm. especially on the transport industries, mining industries, and any other industry where fuel is one of their main assets. These include not just tracking uh, the fuel that the vehicles are consuming yeah. whenever they are on the road, but also optimizing the fuel efficiency, looking for uh, ways to save money mm -hmm. and to be more cost effective whenever the companies are getting the fuel that they need. How can implementing a fuel management system save a company money on their fuel, fuel transactions and their overall cost of operation? Yeah, so the first part of it is a, whenever you have a system, you yeah. can start by filling up paperwork mm -hmm. and you can actually put a, a people to, to manage that for you manually. Whenever we are turning that into some other methods that mm -hmm. are going to improve or that are going to automate the process, such as uh, devices that are going to uh, record that information automatically, uh, what you're going to gain is two things. The first one is real-time information. And the second thing is uh, accuracy on the information that you're getting. You can pass from a person filling up some information. He can make mistakes. He can enter or fill up uh, the paperwork with wrong information. Uh, but if you have a system in place and you have a system that you, that you can automate, that system will help you and that information will help you, first of all, to know exactly what is what you're consuming, who is getting that fuel that uh, the system is telling you that it is uh, that you're consuming. Yeah. And also this is going to help you to make better decisions in the future. There's a significant advantage to a company having a fuel level monitoring system, right? Mm -hmm. So how does a fuel level monitoring system integrate into our system? And how does that whole thing kind of come together? Mm -hmm. It should be the first part of the process, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why is that is because the first thing that you need to know in order to be able to dispense fuel to your vehicles, in order to provide fuel to your vehicles, is to know how much fuel you have, how much fuel you're going to have how much money you're going to spend on the fuel that, uh, that you need to buy. One of the uh, main things that you have to automate in your process is a, a system that is going to tell you in real time how much fuel you currently have, how much fuel you're spending per day, how much fuel you have left for uh, the remaining days. And this is going to help you, first of all, to make sure that your provider the vendor that is providing the fuel mm -hmm. uh, is going to be on time. You're going to be able to identify what are the days of the week where you are spending most of the fuel, right? And this 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 way you can take that problem. And while you're automating that, it's not going to be a problem anymore. Yeah, that's very crucial for a company because the worst possible thing that could happen is that company running out of fuel and being out of operation. What you can see is that usually whenever you whenever you don't have a system in place. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you do is manual measurements. And those manual measurements are being made once a day, every 24 hours. What we are doing here is taking measurements every five minutes. And while we are taking measurements every five minutes, we can identify uh, what is the behavior of the inventory of uh, the tank that we are measuring. We can send alerts to our customers. We can let the user know what exactly is happening with that tank. And then the user, instead of guessing, uh, he will take decisions on what to do. Fuel management systems are not only about management of fuel, but also about optimization and security. So I'm sure there's been instances that we've run into where pe people in companies uh, are misusing fuel, taking fuel into their personal vehicles, mm -hmm. stealing fuel, or mm -hmm. using uh, the wrong fuel types on wrong vehicles. Mm -hmm. So how does our fuel management system kind of help prevent those kind of issues from happening? This is exactly one of the main features that we are offering uh, in in uh, as part of our system, whenever we go uh, and offer this system to to our potential customers, one of the main concerns is how we can make sure that the fuel that we are 
um, dispensing through our systems is really going to the vehicles where the fuel needs to go. And at the same time, how we can make sure that we will know who is the driver or who is the person that is getting that fuel. So in this case, we have several methods, a secure methods of uh, authentication, such as Dallas keys or HID cards. And I can give you an example in one of, in one of our customers, we have implemented the same HID card that they are using to get into the gates, into the terminal, that same card for each employee, they can use it to get fuel. Sometimes, for example, if the user is authorized to get fuel, right? Okay, we can use the system to um, authorize him to get fuel. And if there is a user that, uh, even though that he has a card, he doesn't need to get fuel, he's not authorized to get fuel, you can also do that in the system. You can say, or you can basically deny it. Yeah. So most of the time, though, it's a it's a two factor, like a two step authentication mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So they're not just scanning the card and being able to fuel. Mm -hmm. They're scanning the card. They're putting in their employee ID number mm -hmm. or their vehicle ID. And then mm -hmm. there's also other prompts like vehicle mileage, mm -hmm. um, vehicle hours and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. That helps kind of prevent fuel theft. There's more than one factor of authentication. We're not only secure. But they're also adding more information that will help us to identify if there is any abnormal situations mm -hmm. that we have to pay attention to. So, for example, if we see that there is a person that is using exactly the same vehicle to, to, to get fuel every single day, three times a day or four times a day, right? What's going to happen? We will pick it up because of the odometer so we can identify how much fuel you are getting or how, how much fuel you're dispensing to that vehicle what is the current uh, miles for that vehicle and then we get we can identify if that's too high or too low so i'm sure some people might be thinking like why would companies need to know their odometer or their engine hours their mileage and so on so this is mostly for what the current miles and the current engine hours are key to calculate the fuel consumption when you are managing vehicles right this way if you take that information and you combine that information with the amount of fuel that you are dispensing to that vehicle, then you can get two measurements, miles per gallon and gallons per hour. What you can do now is to say, okay, if I have a vehicle that is consuming 20 gallons per hour and I need this vehicle to run for eight hours a day, so I, now I know that I will need at least 160 gallons a day. And now I know that, that uh, in a week, I will need a, a total of 800 gallons a week. So this is the type of uh, information that we want to get from the system. So as far as uh, maintenance of the vehicles, mm -hmm. how does that kind of tie into knowing how many mileage is on the vehicle, how many mm -hmm. hours the vehicle has ran? How does like the manager, for example, of a shop, why would he need to know that for maintenance purposes? The, the main challenge for the fleet managers is to be able to do maintenance to, the, to their vehicles on time. And the reason why there is a challenge with that is because they cannot be in control of every single vehicle without no one telling them what is the current uh, situation for that vehicle in terms of miles and hours. So basically what, we, what we're doing is um, we know that the vehicle will have to get fuel. So we're going to take that opportunity, right, for the driver to inform what is the uh, current miles? What is the current engine hours that uh, that vehicle has? We also have technology that we that uh, can take that information automatically from the from the computer of the vehicle, and we can take that information and combine that information together with the fuel transaction. At the same time, what we do is we can take that information and we can interface that information with whatever third-party application the fleet manager is using, and if you can. Take that information, we can say, okay, let's imagine that every single vehicle that is getting fuel at the fuel island will communicate to the fleet manager maintenance system. And then the fleet manager will know, right, every single day, what is the latest uh, engine hours readings or what is the latest odometer readings from, from each vehicle. Then he will be able to, to call for maintenance. And that's going to save a lot of money because Instead of, the, uh, instead of the fleet manager. Fixing a problem that's already happened, it's preventing preventative maintenance. Exactly. Usually, usually the preventive maintenance costs uh, one tenth of, a, of, a, of, of the cost of, of fixing a problem that already happened. An example with our fuel management system, uh, let's say you are filling up diesel into mm -hmm. a diesel truck mm -hmm. and you're authorized to fill into that diesel truck. Mm -hmm. Perfect. But let's say now you try to authorize to fill into a gas truck. It will not let you fuel saving you 
hundreds and thousands depending mm-hmm. on the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So this is another feature that our system can do, which is preventing the wrong fuel types. And this is something that you can easily identify in the system. Obviously, our fuel management system is capturing all this information mm-hmm. and it's putting it into our software. So can you explain a little bit what the software is doing with this information, where the information is going, and how we use that software for AI mm-hmm. and BI to give reports and so on? The software is providing uh, to you two different types of uh, functionalities. The first one is the process of authorization. And the second uh, part of the process is basically the data that we are collecting once we are authorizing. We want to manage fuel in a secure way. That's the first part. So what we are offering is uh, we want to make sure whatever person wants to fuel a particular vehicle, the vehicle and the driver will be authorized to do that action, right? So that's the first part. Once we authorize, and this is something that we are authorizing online, and we have a cloud system, uh, a cleaning house uh, that is uh, a authorizing those transactions online 24 hours a day, mm-hmm. right? Um, once the user finishes dispensing fuel to a vehicle, right, we can get the data. And then once we are uh, collecting the data, we can do uh, many more tasks related to, to, uh, to the information that we are collecting. The first part, we can take the quantities of the fuel that we are uh, getting. We, are, we also can take uh, who um, did that transaction, which vehicle got the fuel, uh, at what time, when, uh, as we were actually mentioning earlier today, um, we can also collect the information about the current uh, engine hours uh, uh, readings and also the uh, mile or the miles, the current miles uh, readings from, from the vehicle. And then we can, uh, we can interface that with a third party ERP or whatever maintenance system that we can, that we can, that, that our customer can or may have. And then we can also take that, all that information, right? And uh, we can put it into our data warehouse. Um, the data warehouse is a very powerful um, a tool that we are using uh, to collect all the data. And then once we have that data into our data warehouse, we can always take that data and process it through a really um, powerful BI system that we have in order to uh, combine all that information, process that data, and give you three things. What happened in the past? what is happening right now and what is going to happen in the future based on the information or based on the historical information that we were uh, collecting. So Diego, thank you so much for uh, joining us today on this episode of Petro Talk. Uh, we always love having you here. Very informative, very smart, uh, always such a good knowledge base behind everything that you do. So thank you again. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be all for this episode. Make sure to like, subscribe and turn on those notifications and we'll keep you updated on the next episode.